Hi guys, it's Nikki from Nikki's Embroidery and I thought I'd make a little overview regarding capacitive stylus pins that will work with your new Baby Lock Solaris. Um, we're going to show you the tips and points, tell you a little bit about each one and we're going to mention the things that we like about them or don't like about them. So the first thing I would do is run and get a piece of paper or a tablet and a pen so you can take some notes. Just pause the video and go do that real quick. Okay, now that you're back, we're going to start off just letting you know the ones that we're going to overview. I selected several different st stylus, capacitive stylus pens, and those that are not really capacitive stylus pens, but they're sold as such. And I'll make note of those when that happens. But the first thing off the bat, I want you to write these all down on the piece of paper. That way you guys can check mark them off if you like them or if it's something you want to look into a little bit. Because I do understand that when you're purchasing them, I don't know if they can be purchased locally where you're at. Where I'm at, they can't. So they have to be ordered. And so my staff has ordered several. I've ordered a few and I've tested dozens and dozens and dozens. So if they're not on this list, that doesn't mean that they're not good. It's possibly that they didn't make the cut for myself. I do digitize from the screen. I do use a Wacom tablet and so I'm very familiar with capacitive touch pins in regards to the way that they're used. So we're going to go down the list really quickly and we're going to make a list. That's the first thing. That's the first step, okay? So first step to bat, let's see what we've got. All right, we've got an anti-fouling glove. An anti-fouling glove is used to keep your palm or your tips, if you rest them, if you tend to rest them on an active screen, that will keep them from making a mark on the screen, thereby creating a stitch. So pretty important. Uh, this particular anti-fouling glove comes with several different pins or can be purchased by itself, and it works on the left and the right hand. So you just flip it over. So it works for everybody. So that was an anti-fouling glove. Okay. After that, we've got an active touch capacitive stylus. So active touch capacitive stylus. That one's kind of neat. Right after that, we're going to go over the EVAC active stylus. Right after that, we're going to work with the MECO or MECO digital stylus. And this is the fine tip version of that digital stylus. Then we're going to move on to the MOKU universal stylus. Then we're going to go on to the Xyron stylus. Now that's Xyron, that's X-I-R-O-N stylus. Right after that, we've got a Z-Speed. We're going to check out that one. Then we have a Meco or Miko high sensitivity stylus, and that's with the disc tip and then the mesh at the other end. Um, we're going to cover that one. Then we're going to go over the E-SDS active stylus. Yes, that's called E-SDS active stylus. And then I thought I'd let you guys see the Moku holiday holder case. It looks like I said holiday, but holder case. All right. And then we have a wild card. If we have time, our wild card is the friendly Swede four in one. Okay. So we're going to cover all of those and I'll make sure that we're going to show you guys the tip. So we will actually show you every tip of each pin in the end. And we're also going to show you guys how to use it on the screen. So that kind of makes sense. So we're going to talk about which one and we're just going to go straight off the bat. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, I'm gonna and I'm gonna go ahead and put on the styling glove because the reason why is because I do tend to rest my hand so I'll put it on right here in camera okay and so since the way that I'm filming I'm gonna have to film right-handed just because of the way the camera equipment set up and so but I would normally wear it on my other hand so it's always a little awkward for me when we're filming on the screen because I use my different hand so that's okay so I'm gonna use this with all of them you may not need this glove if you don't tend to rest your hand now before we proceed I do want to mention to you guys that um, you can use a mouse a wired mouse with your baby lock Solaris machine I myself am very familiar with styluses and I prefer to digitize with one because that's just what I use on Wacom tablet so I'm used to it so you could use a mouse a wired mouse if you like this is for those of you who like the feeling of the stylus pen okay so that make kind of makes sense all right so right up the bat we're gonna go to the active touch capacitive stylus okay that's the active touch and we're gonna go straight up and I kind of want to mention to you on the active touch the active touch actually has its own little USB hub so it's just a little tiny USB charger and then the cap you remove the cap to expose the little the little charger and it's, it's an easy snap on cap and it just charges that way and then of course now at the other end you've got this little kind of tip do you see this little rubber tip and I really 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 do like this one a lot and I'm going to show you guys why so let me just I'm going to put that lid back on let me talk to you a little bit about it so this one um, I like it because it's got a push button it's got a little push button at the top to tell you to turn on and it has a pencil feel so when I hold it it does look like a pencil so we're going to go to the screen and I'm going to show you guys exactly how this one works okay all right so we're down at the screen really quickly one of the first things you guys need to know is I'm going to turn this on 
it needs to turn on and you'll see that kind of light kind of turn on and if it doesn't turn on that means that it's not charged so I need you guys to kind of understand if these are not on they won't work see the power light so you cannot just use this and expect that you're going to touch it it's got to be turned on Did you guys see how that kind of activated so if you want to activate this item you really do need to make sure that you've turned it on okay so we can see we drew a shape again one of the things I like about this anti fouling glove is I can still kind of rest my hand on the screen now you can kind of see that I have to put a little bit of extra force with this one. It's not terrible, but in my opinion, it's 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 not necessary. But you can see, I, I don't I think with a little bit of practice maybe, and it's not a bad pin. It's a little on the thicker side, and it's a little taller, which means it's not my favorite, but it could possibly very very well be your favorite. It it, it really reasonably could. If you think about it, it does hold like a pencil. So it holds like a pencil. It's just, it is long. So for me, I do like it. It's just not my absolute favorite. Okay, so it's not my absolute favorite. And this one was the Active Touch Capacitive Stylus. Now, some of you are absolutely going to love it. Some of you will absolutely love it. Um, you're not going to have any problem with the tip. Now, one thing I don't super love about this is the other end doesn't have the mesh covered cap. Covered cap. Um, that's not a huge, huge deal. And you can see that you kind of have to play with it a little bit. Um, and let me swap to the other camera and just give you guys a little heads up. I'm learning self-filming and learning to be at the screen. So I'm going to go to the screen so you can see what we did. So again, we're down here. I'm going to clear this screen. You guys can kind of see that. And we're going to play a little bit more with this pin. It definitely, you don't have to hold it very hard. I will say that. I may, Some of my reservation about this particular pin could be the angle that I'm sitting at. I do have to sit at a little different angle. But uh, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give this one not a bad grade. It actually does not get a bad grade at all. This one really, really works. So mm, I'm going to have to give the Active Touch Capacitive, st capacitive Stylus. I think I'm going to give it a high B. It's not a bad pin. It's a little on the tall side, but that's just my opinion. You, you might like that. It's not thick. Now that, it gives it a plus. Okay, so this one's not too bad. So Active Touch. Active Touch. You can order that. These, um, they, my staff did tell me these were all ordered online i think in amazon if they had ordered them that's probably where they went okay so we've got the active touch we're gonna go up to the next one that the very next pin is the evac active stylus now this one this one is my favorite this i love this one this is i i think i have three now okay that's why i have the little carrying case so this one's kind of nice one of the first things about this pin i'm going to put it down on the camera so that you guys can kind of see it because i want you guys to see kind of what's going on here but uh, let's go down here this has got the mesh tip on this end and then you can see it's got a power button right there and then at the other end you can see that it's a very very fine tip and I really really do like that and then it also is definitely the weight of a regular pen so this this actually feels like a pen it's not got a strange weight to it the cap is magnetic it pops off and so then also down at the cap it's another one that charges charges a little differently than the other it came with its own charger but then the end you just plug in okay so i i really like it this is one that i really like i like the magnetic magnetic part of it i do want to make a note to you okay and i'm going to put this down on camera because i need you guys to really see this this is super important this has a power button. Do y'all see that right there? When you click that and turn that on, you can see that it's turned blue. It needs a second to turn on. You need to let it actually turn on and activate because that's what will make it look, work. Now, on that note, if they're not used for a few minutes, and I just found this out recently, I think 30 or 45 seconds, all of them are different. They will power down and, and cease being synced with the screen. And so you may not notice, but the light will go out and then it's not active and so you probably have seen sometimes some, maybe some struggling at the screen that's what's going on they're not synced so keep in mind this turns on and then you can use it on the screen not necessarily synced but it needs to be on and you need to give it a few seconds if you immediately touch it and turn it on and then try to touch the screen it's not completely active now do i have a degree in capacitive pins no i don't but this is just from my personal experience of playing with them so we're going to go to the screen and we're going to see what's going on all right Okay, so here we are. we got a clean screen. We know that this pin is active because it's blue. And we're going to use the mesh top first so you guys can just kind of get a look at it. And again, I'm at an angle. If I've got the paintbrush filler on, that's what's going to occur. 
but then I can just go ahead and turn on the pencil tool up here and look and see and of course this will always I think all the mesh ones always work and that's wonderful the interesting thing is to find out if the other one works okay so that's this tip and I'm gonna scoot my seat a little bit so I can actually get in front of it I'm standing I'm sitting to the back of this machine so I want to make sure I'm not in the shot too much though so you can see where the the glove can come in handy do you guys kind of see if I need to rest my hand so that's an anti fouling glove and then of course I can kind of look and you guys can kind of see very very simple so if you really do want to draw some fine lines this is really the way to go with it okay and you can kind of see if you have a closed area very 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 handy I really like this one a lot I'm going to choose all clear again and I want to show you guys something because this is important if you try to pencil draw this is not really a pen pencil it's an active capacitive stylus if you try to lay it down you're not going to get the exact results you should want and of course with filming you guys need to understand if you're watching anyone who's being filmed with the capacitive pens it's not that the screen has an issue it's that they're having to hold the pencil at an angle to keep their hand out of the way does that make sense if I was actually digitizing here I mean, that's when I have a little talk with you guys. If I was actually digitizing, I would be able to sit directly in front of the machine and, and get it exactly where I want it to be. What's going on, though, is when people are being filmed, they're trying to keep their hand out of the screen, out of the shot, so that you can see. So that's some of the struggle that you're seeing. So let's go back to that screen. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I am at this angle. And you guys can kind of see we're not getting results. A little bit once I get it lifted up, okay? But if I am exactly lifted up the whole time, I'm sorry guys, I've got the paintbrush tool on, the bucket tool. You guys can kind of see that if I'm directly in front, now my hand's in front of your way, definitely for you to see. But if I lay down at this angle, and let me clear the screen so you guys can see that, you can see that it gives a beautiful smooth line. This one, hands down, is really, 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 really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a little heart so you guys can see. You can see you get a very fine line. So I really, really like this one. So I'm going to tell you which one this was, and I'm going to remember to shut it off because let me break this down for you. I have noticed, too, that if you double click on some of them, that leaves them turned on and they don't deactivate. So then the battery just dies. And so when you do need it and you go to pick it up, it's dead. So just touching the button once, the light will go out. Okay. So what was that one? That was the Evac Active Stylus. It's a Nikki's favorite. I absolutely love that one. Uh, that's it's it's hands down it's absolutely evac very 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 nice very nice stylus all right let's see what's up okay so so far we've covered the active touch and then also the evac now you may like the active touch i don't want you to maybe not look at it but here's a good idea if you and your friend both have a baby lock solaris yay that's awesome Maybe you order a few and she can order a few and you guys could maybe get together and see which ones you like because that's what I did with a friend of mine and it was interesting some that she liked I didn't like and then a couple that I liked she couldn't stand so it is a matter of personal preference it's how you hold your pencil whether you're right handed or left handed and a, many different other things and of course you may be perfectly happy with the stylus that came with the Solaris I don't know if you are or not but I, I prefer to use something a little lighter weight and a little thinner all right so we're moving right up next we're going to go to the Miko Digital Stylus. Now this one, this one's another one that, um, let me mention this to you. I like this one. It, it's, it's got a magnetic cap, so I did like that. And it's got a little plug-in charger, so I enjoyed that. And I'm going to put the put it on camera so you guys can kind of see the little tip, because I want you to see what the tip looks like. This is the tip. It's actually very nice tip on it. So I, ha I can't say that I don't like this one or I haven't used it a whole lot. I haven't had as much practice, but I do want to flip it around so you guys can kind of see the tip on the other end. This one turns on by twisting. So I'm going to twist it and then hope that you can see that little, do you guys kind of see that little blue light right there? If this one is not turned on, it's another one that won't work. Okay, it's another one that won't work, but I do like that it has the mesh top this end and then the very fine tip here, okay? So I do like those two things. Now, what's the drawback for this one? It's not necessarily a drawback. It's that it's, again, it's a long one. So in a lot of times these are made long because people are using a rather large tablet and to give that cantilevered, it, it's helpful. It, to me, I don't like it because remember, I'm already really, really attempting to try to hold something in the opposite hand. So, and I'm also holding it incorrectly. So you may like this one and I don't dislike this one, but we're gonna go to the screen and we're gonna test it out. Okay, let's go see. Let's go find out. 
Okay, first of all, let's clear this screen or we'll return it. Oh, well, we don't need to cancel. We'll just hit all clear. All right, and you can see a very easy touch with this one. Of course, all the mesh tops have a really easy touch. So, and of course, it will draw. It's very, I'm not putting hardly any pressure. And you can even see at an angle, the mesh top does really well. Okay, you guys can kind of see that. But let's, that's the really important part, let's be honest, is the tip because we need to some fine detailing. Sometimes we do need to trace around point to point. And um, I would have scanned and done that for you guys, but I think it gets a little too involved. This is really about the styluses and the tips, not really about scanning. So I'm going to scoot up a little closer and get in front of the machine so I can actually get a fair representation of this one. But I do want to make sure my head's not in the way. Okay, good. Now, right off the bat, you can see that I have to put a little bit more pressure on this end of it. Okay, I absolutely do. Let me turn on that bucket tool. And that, to me, it's not a bad thing. It's just not something I absolutely love. Okay, so it's not a bad thing, but I am having to actually touch each area. Not hard, but a little more pressure than I would like when I'm actually trying to digitize, okay? Now, here's something interesting. Let me clear this because I want you guys to see an honest test of it. I did notice if I anchor my hand, I kind of want to make sure that you guys can see that. Once it's, once it's going, I think I might be changing my opinion about this pin. Huh. Okay. Well, I have to tell you guys, honestly, I think I have a different opinion about this pin. Let's have a little chat because I definitely think, let's, we're going to have a little chat about this. Uh, Hmm, I don't think I gave this one a fair review originally when I was first playing with it. So let's talk about this one. This one's the Miko Digital Stylus. It's a fine tip. It gets an A+. Plus. I mean, it's, it's pretty nice. I like this one. So the one that I first did not like, come back to it, and I really do like it. It's a little on the tall side, but I can maybe make that work. This one I'm going to keep with me. I don't, I don't think it's a bad shot. All right, so that was the Miko. Now... Not to be confused, so I want to make sure you guys understand this. We don't want to mix these things up. So that was the Miku, but now it's almost have to learn a different language here. The next one's Moku. This is a Moku Universal Stylus. I actually think this one's not too shabby. It's on the pin form, so I kind of want to show you at the, the up close. So it has the, the screen tip for major drawing. And then down at the other end, you just kind of dial that cap. And it has that disc. Now, some of you may or may not like the disc tip stylus, but I'm going to show you its possibility. And then this has a screw-on cap, but it also has a clip that you can put on your pocket. I'm not really one that wears things in the pocket. And, of course, I never have a pocket to put it in, but I'm going to use my case. But we're going to go over to the machine. And we're going to talk about it. Again, it has the mesh tip on one end, and then the cap just screws into either end. And then it has the disc stylus. We're going to have a little chat about the disc stylus. This is the first one in this series that has the disc stylus. The other ones don't. They're actual pin style. But we're going to go to the screen because this may be one that you like. And I'm not going to say I dislike it. It just may not be for tracing around items. So I want to take a minute to have that conversation with you guys. Are you going to have just one stylus? It's very likely you might have a couple of them because there, there'll be different techniques. So if you're point to point around something that you've scanned or you're really trying to get in close to trace, you might use one type of pen. And then if you're filling in, maybe you've scanned some coloring book pages and you want to fill in each area, you might use a different capacitive stylus. So I'm giving you permission to have more than one. You can definitely have more than one. Don't tell your husband I said so, but you can do it. But let's go to the screen and let's see how if we like this one. So don't forget, this one was the Moku. So let's look. This is Moku Universal Stylus. And we're going to the screen. Okay, let's clear this one. And let's see how well we did. Now, first thing off the bat, I want you guys to note that there is no power on this. So, I want you to understand something. This one is a stylus, but it's not a powered stylus. It doesn't plug in. There's no charger. There's no connect. When you pick it up, you use it. When you put it down, it doesn't need to be charged. Okay, so that's the difference. This is the first one that does not charge. Everything else we showed you does charge. Okay, oops, wrong screen, so sorry about that. Let's go to this one, and we're going to look. We're going to see how well we like this disc model. Now, one thing right off the bat, I've noticed that there is a, not that it needs a little bit of pressure or a lot of pressure, but you should be right on top of it, okay? So definitely right in front of it, and what I mean by that is not laid down at an angle, okay? This one does better than most, oh, we just found out something, guys. Aha, we just found out something. Let's have a chat. The disc one, and I'm going to put it on the camera so you guys can kind of see that. We're going to go close, close, close. 
All right, do you guys kind of see the way this is bending? This right here, you can write with this stylus with it. So it's got this rubber tip. So we're going to look at that again at the screen and see that because it does allow for you to come down at an angle. So if you tend to hold your pin, maybe you guys can kind of see that I'm at a huge angle here. If you tend to hold your pin that way, this might be the stylus for you. So why is this stylus so good? Well, it definitely, I'll say one thing for it, you don't have to charge it. Um, so if you are in desperate need and you do need to do something, this one's not too bad. All right, so this one's not too bad. Now, obviously, the mesh tip, you guys can see that I'm not using the mesh tip as much because we know that the mesh tip works. Let's, let's be very fair. We all know the mesh tip works, okay? We absolutely know that. I'm going to take this to that next screen and just kind of see what we've got. So the mesh tip always works. I, it's been my experience. It always works. The mesh tip always works for me. We're going to touch set so we can kind of view this. And this is forming. And then you can see we've got the satin stitches. And it's got a pretty good line. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can kind of see that. Definitely some fun stuff for crazy art. And you can see that you get a very fine line. So I'm very happy with that. I'm very, very happy with that one. All right, I'm going to close that. And I'm going to hit return. I'm going to hit all clear so we can go to our next review. Want to have a little chat, though? Okay, so this one, I want to make sure I'm looking at my list. This was the Moku. Okay, so this was the Moku Universal Stylus. All right. And uh, it's not too shabby. You don't have to charge it. It's got a little bending tip. It has the continual mesh. Now, one thing I will say, I do like a pen that's got both ends. Not all do. So this one you don't have to charge. It's Moku. I'm going to give it a bad grade. I would probably keep this around just for different little things. So that would not be my primary one, but I wouldn't totally get rid of it. I wouldn't, it wouldn't break my heart if I had it in my lineup, okay? All right, we're going to look at our next one. Our next one is going to be a Xyron stylus, all right? We're going to talk about the Xyron stylus. Xyron actually came with an anti-fouling glove. You can purchase these anti-fouling gloves independently or it'll come with one. And the other neat thing about this one is it has a magnetic top and of course it charges from the lid. And then I'm going to take you on camera and I'm going to let you guys kind of see what the tip looks like because it, that's kind of important. It's hard to shop for them when you don't see the tip. Now this one is the most similar. The Miko, this one, and the Evac have the most similar in weight and tip. So for me, those are the ones that I tend to like. This one I do like. I decided to have it and keep it. It's got a little power button, which I think is kind of nice. And the weight on it is really, really, really nice. All right, so we're going to turn that on. And we're going to show you guys. So there's its power button. When you click it on, you guys can kind of see. There we go. And we're going to go straight to the screen and we're going to play with it. Let's go look and see. All right, so it has its mesh across the top at first. It does most of these pins do that we tested. And it's been my experience, they work all the time. So I haven't seen one mesh tip that doesn't really work. Um, our issue is we want to make sure that the fine tip is good for our screen and that it works well. And I'm going to go ahead and change the color from, um, I think I've got it on green. And again, I am way up here. I'm going to have to get in front of the sewing machine so I can see. All right, let me put it on black. Now, that's kind of a prime example. If you do try to touch this and you're not directly up above it, it's not going to catch. That's not a problem with the screen. It's the problem with the way we're holding these, okay? So they're not all the same. They're all different. Just keep that in mind. So I'm going to kind of get over here, and I'm going to make myself draw. There we go. And I'm going to make some very fine little scallops just around the edge here. You'll have to forgive me. It's not wonderful art, but it's what we're doing. All right, and we're going to turn on that bucket and maybe fill in. Oops, didn't close that area. We'll fill right there. All right, and maybe fill there. Okay, so let's touch it on the next screen so we can get an idea of what it looks like. Um, oh, not too shabby. So I have to say that this particular one, and again, if you are not directly in front, I kind of want you guys to see that, you cannot, at an angle, it doesn't always work. So you have to understand. Do you see how I'm barely touching? See this right here? Now watch this. This can make it look like it's a screen issue when in fact it's not. It's just a matter of where you're touching, okay? And so we're going to have a little chat about that because it's important. This is a capacitive touch pens. These are in a capacitive touch screen. Now, what does that mean? 
I don't know. I'm not an engineer. I just know that you, if it's not the screen, it's the way we're holding it. Because some days it's always just right on. And then occasionally I've noticed I have my hand held at a certain angle. Or maybe I didn't have the glove on. Or, and you even saw for yourself. So if, it's, if you're not careful and conscious of what you're doing, you could in fact be causing some of your problems. Well, I know that was true for me. You may not be doing that at all. But I know it was true for me. I'm going to remember to turn this off. Because if I don't, when I want to go use it again, it will automatically turn off or it will kill the battery actually. So a few of them, the battery, it will turn off or disconnect or stop working about 30 seconds if you set it down with, from lack of use. If you're holding it, it won't when you're using it. Some don't turn off and they just let the battery die. If you turn them off, you can get several weeks of battery life out of them if you use it a couple times a day. So that's kind of give you guys an idea of that. It's, it's not one of those um, things that's hard to maintain and they all come with chargers and things like that, but just something to think about. All right, next up is Z-Speed, Z-Speed, and um, I don't believe that I see a pink one there, but I'm going to try to look. Well, I think that one, the one that we have is a black one, but we're going to go with that, all right? So we've got a Z-Speed, or maybe we do have one. I'm not certain. We'll look. Okay, I see one right there. There we go, Z-Speed. All right, so first off the bat, we're going to look at the tip on this one, because this one's a little interesting. Here's the tip on this. And very similar to the other in the sense that it has the mesh cap tip that allows. And uh, we're going to actually take it to the screen and we're going to see how well it does. This one has a power button, so it will need to be turned on. Just kind of wait for it to turn on. There we go. I've got a little faint blue light. And I'm going to choose return and all clear. Now this one here, oops, I'm sorry guys. I keep putting it on paint. This one here is very, very, very gentle. It's not bad at all. Pretty easy to use. A little lighter weight pin than I'm used to, but I can't say I hate it. Oh, I won't say I hate it. Oh, I won't say I hate it at all. It's not awful. It's not awful at all. You can definitely write your name with these. Probably all of them, but this one especially. And I'm going to go ahead and try to write my name on there. I'm going to have to get a little bit more in front of the screen though. Oops. Sorry guys. You have to remember if that happens to you, it's just because I don't have this act this pencil activated, okay? Huh. This one's actually pretty nice. Got to be honest with you guys. I like this one. This one's not too bad. It's not my altogether personal favorite. So I, mean, I have tested it. It's not terrible. I think on this one it was the battery life. I think it was a little slow. And then sometimes the connectivity issues, which I want to state for the record, the connectivity issues. It's... Um, they, they do need to not necessarily sync, but if you don't turn this on, you're not going to get the same results. And if you don't give it a few seconds. So this one feels the most like a pin as far as weight and held, and held wise. Um, and you might like it. This one I would definitely look at. Am I going to give it a A or a B? I'll give it a high C. I'll give it a high C for me. It's not something I'd throw away. I don't hate it, but it, it, there are other options out there that, I, that for me are better. Not necessarily for you you might love this one. Okay, does that make sense? You might pick this up and it's your stylus, it's your capacitive pen and you're so excited. Great. So this one that we were talking about is the Z-Speed, okay? I had a black one, there's pink ones there as well, okay? All right, now we gotta look and see what's up next. Oh, this one's, this one's fine, okay. Up next is the Miko High Sensitivity Stylus. And uh, let me look. Let me look. Let me look. I want to make sure I have the right one. Okay, there we go. All right. This particular one, I do like as far as this tip. And you know what, you guys? I might have these accidentally. I think that's got that flopped. This one here, I got two swapped. Moku and I did. Moku and Miku, we've got swapped. Okay, so just pay attention to that. So this is the tip that we're dealing with on this one. And we're going to go to the camera shot. It's very possible. I'm sorry, I think they got moved around. There was little post-its. Uh, they have three that are my favorite that I recognize by sight. One thing you need to understand is very few of them are labeled, like with the actual name of them. So you got the idea. You have the list. You can Google it. Just make a mental note. You can always go back to the video and watch. Mea culpa, mea culpa. All right, so let's look at the tip on this one. Here's this tip on this. And then here's the other end here. You guys can kind of see that. And uh, one of the interesting things about this one that I found was... Uh, let me make sure. This has this little power button as well on the side. Again, very similar weight, but oh, I like this one better than the one I had last because it doesn't have the clip. 
the clip adds weight to me, so the pocket clip so you can hang it. So we're going to go to the screen and we're going to see how that looks, okay? So we're going to find the picture though first and make sure that we're on the right one. This is actually the Moku stylus. No, it's not. The Moku's got the, uh, well, looks like they've got these mixed up on there. All right, it looks like they have them a little bit mixed up. The names are correct, even if we're mixing them up as far as they were placed on the desk in order. They may have rolled. They're all pins. I'm sorry. But you get the general idea. You can Google search to clo more closely define the one that you may like. All right, so we're going to go over. We're going to make sure that this has been turned on for about two or three seconds so it actually works. Let me get over here to the screen. We're going to hit return. And this one, you can kind of see, I, I, I just feel like it's, it's resistant. Oh. I didn't turn the camera around to that screen. Do you guys see I'm learning my new camera system? So let's go to the screen. All right, let's try that again. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try the all clear. And what I wanted you guys to kind of see is this one I had to kind of put a little pressure. And you may not have to do that. It could be the angle that I'm at. It could be the way I'm holding my pencil. It's a very big possibility. Let me try to get a little closer. Oh, did you guys kind of see how I'm really marking? But I have to really kind of put a little bit of pressure on there. And that's one thing. Once it gets going good, I notice this pin's fine. But it really does require me to put a little bit of pressure. Now that it's going, it's not requiring it. Oh, kind of like that. Okay, so that's something to note. Okay, that's something to make note of. This particular pin, it takes a little bit to get started. So is it the pin? Do I think it's the pin? It's not that I think it's the pin. I think I probably am tending to hold it a little different. I'm also at an angle. So when you go to test these pins, I want you to sit directly in front of the Baby Lock Solaris. I want you to relax, maybe put on an anti-fouling glove if you need one, and then sit there and play with them a little bit. Don't forget, it's very likely you can send back anything that didn't work, okay, or that didn't work for you. And you may like the ones that I don't like, or you might like the ones I do like. It's a ma it truly is a matter of personal preference. And also whether or not you had, um, if you're left-handed and then learn to do it right-handed, or the way you hold your hand in your pencil, okay? That's going to affect a good bit of it. Someone else may be using a stylus, and they absolutely love it, and you might think it's garbage. Okay, it's a very much a matter of personal preference. All right, now we're going to go look at the last one that we said we'd talk about. And that one, aha, I do see the swapping. So while you guys are looking at that screen, I'm going to see what happened because now I do see what happened. Okay, let's look and see what we've got. All right. Okay, now we're going to use the ESDS Active Stylus. I realize now what happened when they moved these to this table so I could grab from the left because I am left-handed. They may have let them roll and they just didn't go back and look at the PowerPoint presentation. So I apologize if they're a little bit out of order, but we'll recap at the end, okay? So this is the one that you guys just saw, but it really is the ESDS. So we're going to look at that. We're going to match it up. And we'll walk backwards if we have to. It's our first time doing using the self-filming video software. Okay, so this one... And I can see that now was actually the ESDS, okay? This one, ESDS Active Stylus. That's this one right here, okay? It's got a light up pin, light up end, and then the mesh top. We're going to go straight to the screen because I believe that's the one we just used. And they just rolled down. But this is our feed, so we have to make do. We're not going to refilm. All right, that's on the mesh tip. And then we're going to go ahead and try the tip. Huh. Paintbrush. Pencil tool. All right, let's look and see. Yeah, definitely. All right, okay. So because we had a little mix-up and all the pins rolled, I'm going to let you guys know what this one. This one I give, I don't hate this one. It's not my favorite, but it's it's not a bad pin, okay? And every pin that we have here is under, it's between $19.99 and about $24.99 on up to about, I think the max was 30 But this one here was the ESDS Active Stylus, okay? And we're going to walk them back. 
I'll just walk them back and I'll match them from the pictures so that we're certain the grade we gave them. Okay, so I'm going to go back through the pictures. That was ESDS. Over here we had the, I'm going to check, we had the Mick, uh, let's see, Micko, yeah, Micko High Speed Stylus. Okay, and we're going to put that one on camera. So that one was this little item here. Do you guys remember? So that's the Mecco, and that has the, the bendable disc. So what you guys can know about that is this bends, and so it allows you to hold the pin at a bent angle. If you do that, it does allow that. Okay, so that one's kind of neat. Okay, so we've cleared up this one, and we've cleared up that one. Z-speed. We're going to look at the Z-speed. Okay, I'm going to look at the Z-speed, and I'm going to turn on the camera. And I think this is one It's very affordable. It's not maybe my favorite. This is the Z-speed. So I want you guys to see the tip. Good tip. It doesn't have anything on the other end is my issue with the Z speed. Can you guys kind of see that? I doesn't, it may have a cap and maybe it's missing. I don't think that's actually the case though. Yeah, no, it's not. Okay. So here we go. We've got one that's marked. So Z speed. Not terrible. And we're going to run one more practice on it. Okay. Can't hurt us to run more practice. We're going to run more practice with the Z speed and make sure that our opinion is the same since everything was moved around because that's exactly what has happened here. Z speed's been moved around. So we're going to leave that on there and we're going to make sure that we're telling you the correct information on our feed. All right. So let's go ahead and try the Z speed right at the screen. Okay. And I'm going to turn this one on, give it an opportunity to anchor so or to actually turn on and activate. And then I'm going to try the all clear. And you can kind of see why I'm just not a huge fan of this one. It's just, it seems, it takes it a little while once it anchors with the screen. Now, once it anchors with the screen and it kind of activates the touch, and I want to have a little conversation with you about that. Okay, little bit of a talk. This one's not terrible. A little bit of a talk. Like, why, why is it called, why are these called active touch? I don't know if you guys have noticed, it almost takes a second when you first turn them on and they start working. You almost have to be willing to draw a little bit on the screen and then, and then hit undo, which is great. Our Baby Lock Solaris has undo. So okay, it's a really good option, okay, as far as what's available. It, it just really is. So that one was our Z speed. Okay. So that was that tip on the Z speed. It's not terrible. Don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. Um, it's, it's probably, it's a little lighter weight than what I was looking for. Definitely probably a little bit lighter, uh, lighter weight than what I like, but I don't like a heavy one either. So now we're gonna go to the next one up. So we've got the Miko Digital. All right, just, I'm going to check the pile and make sure that we've got everything the way it's supposed to be, okay? Because I want to make sure I give you guys good information. Okay, this is the Moku. Moku. Okay, just checking. And then we've got the Miko. Give me one second, you guys. I'm getting everybody activated. Okay. All right, now I see what happened. Okay, good job. We're going all through. And we're going to go back to that digital stylus, Meco digital stylus, because I think this one's pretty important. I want to have a chat with it. This one, it turns on and off by just twisting the little top. And I'm going to put it down on the camera so you guys can actually see that in, in action. Just so long as you forgive me, I haven't had a uh, manicure. Forgive me, please. Mea culpa, mea culpa. All right. Kind of get this down here so you guys can kind of see. This one activates just by twisting. So you can see that that's off. You need to make sure that they're on. They won't work if they're not turned on, okay? You got you to gotta have them on, okay? So we're going to test this one one more time. Again, this is the one that I really, really like. But let's go to the screen and we'll see if you like it, okay? Right off the bat, I know it's a little tall, but I still, I'm, I'm, I tend to be falling in love with it. Not going to lie, I really do like it. Um, this one's crazy. It's really, really got a smooth touch to it. You, it might be a little long for some people, but other people might really like that. And I'm one of those that really does like that. This one, hmm. I got to tell you, this one's moving up in my esteem. It really, really, really is. This is the Mecco. And I want to tell you which one that is because it's actually the fine tip. So this is the Mecco digital stylus. Okay. Mecco digital stylus. All right. Okay. And then I want to compare that to the Xyron one because really they're very similar. And we're going to look at those both. So this one's now the Xyron one. And we're going to see if it does better. I went ahead and turned it on. And we're going to go to the screen and we're going to see. All right, let's look. Hmm, I am really like this one as well. I really, really, really do. Again, I'm holding the pin at an angle 
And I want you guys to remember that almost anyone who's teaching on this machine screen will be holding the pin at an angle so that they can have their hand out of your way, okay? Definitely difficult to close my line, so sorry guys. Let's check and see. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, I have to say, honestly, this one's, this one's pretty nice. This is the Xyron stylus. Again, make sure you turn these off when you're done or it'll kill the charge that you have in them. They're not battery operated. They charge, but they lose their charge if they're left on and they're not used. Okay, does that make sense? Um, we're going to recap on the Moku as well, just because of the fact that um, I think I accidentally messed you guys up when they were laid out on the table to the left. They were supposed to be in numerical order matching the PowerPoint presentation, but it sounds like they weren't or it looks like they weren't, but I ha think we're catching it back up. The only one we didn't recover or cover again was the Moku. So let's look at that and make sure. So this is the Moku Universal Stylus. One of the things I really um, thought was interesting about this stylus, it has a magnetic cap and then it charges from the end. And then I'm going to show you the tip as well, because I think for you guys, this is one that's going to be very popular. I'm certain of it. So this is the tip on the Moku. Okay, Moku. And then the end is right here. And then, of course, it's got its magnetic cap. And then its charge is down inside of there. So that was kind of neat. Again, this is that plastic kind of tip with the rubber end. And it has the mesh cap. So it does have the hallmarks of what I think make a really good pen, which uh, a capacitive stylus pen, which is the fact that it's got the mesh end. So you can kind of touch a lot of different buttons. And then it still has the fine tip. But we're going to go to the screen and we're going to test it out again. This one is the Moku Universal Stylus. What does it mean universal? It works on a lot of different applications and it definitely does work on this machine as well. Let's go to the screen and we'll look. All right, let's clear this screen. Okay, now one of the first things I want you guys to note, the, the mesh top will work whether or not the pins turn on or not. So I want you to, to make a habit. Like I just I want to have a chat. Make a habit. When you pick up one of these, check for a power button if you have more than one. If it does have a power button, turn it on and then wait about three seconds. Okay, turn it on because the, the mesh is always going to work. The tip is not going to work if it's not turned on or you're going to have to push very hard. It's not going to be as pleasant, let's say that. All right, here we are at the screen and we're going to kind of look and see what's going on, okay? Well, you guys can see why that happened. I have the fill color turned on. We're going to come over here. I'm sitting way to the right of the machine, so I need to remember what I've turned on for you guys. Okay, we're going to just draw a heart because there's not a lot of things that I can draw right-handed. So I have to practice. I'm so sorry. All right, it looks like we got a little heart. I think we could do a little better. Um, I'm going to draw some other things on there just to kind of see. Let me clear that screen. I want to see if we can make a little waves with it. Hmm. It's not terrible. Could definitely, hmm. I don't. I, this one I don't hate. It's not my absolute favorite. I'll I'll definitely say that it's not my absolute. I actually took the pattern outside of the area. I'm not gonna say it's terrible. I will say this: it's loud, so you can hear that you're actually clicking on the screen. It definitely has more weight than some of the others. Again, turn them off when you're done playing with them because if you don't turn them off, you're gonna have trouble. Now, several of these, several of the uh, like the Moku, they have just a little USB and it has a little external little cable, and you can just charge these. So you definitely want to keep those charged. But let's have a little chat about this thing. This is a Moku holder case and I'm going to have to locate mine. Um, these things are kind of cool because it gives you a way to kind of keep all your little bits and pieces all inside one little carrying case. I'm going to show you the one that I picked out. Um, this one came, this was a self-defense purchase because all these stylus pens kept coming at me to test for you guys and people kept asking questions and it was my goal to be able to self film this, meaning that we don't have to have the videographer here every single day here at, here at the studio. So that's my, that was my goal. So I'm taking a class. I'm learning video production. I'm not good at it yet. So I'm hopeful this is not terrible. If it is, please forgive me. But I've wanted to make a video for you guys for a long time since the fall. Um, but I really do like my little box. This is the one I bought. I'm going to make sure you guys can I have to practice where this is at. I really, really like this. And it just to hold all the pins. Now the other thing about the active stylus glove or the um, anti-fouling glove, I wanted you guys to show that it could work on either hand. And this is the hand I normally wear it on. Okay. And I'm going to go to the screen so you guys can see how difficult it is to film this way. And this is why we're always filming right-handed. Okay. 
you can see that left-handed wise it really gets in the way. So I want you to remember that when you're watching videos and things and you're seeing the Baby Lock Solaris, it's not necessarily that there is a difficulty with the screen. In my opinion, I haven't had difficulty with my screen. What the issue is, is coming at an angle. It's, it's, it's very normal to want to pick one of these items up and think of them as a pencil, but they're not. They're not a pencil. They look like a pencil and maybe feel like a pencil, but they're not actually a pencil. Now we do have one wild card. Um, I thought I'd pull out a wild card for you guys. Let me show you what it is. This is your wild card. It's called, this one came, this is a, this great set. This came from a company called The Friendly Swede. It's called The Friendly Swede 4 in 1. 4 in 1 stylus. Kind of an interesting little thing here. Uh, let me show you the box. This guy's great. Um, this is, I don't know if he's actually a Swede or not, but I think this had a ribbon and it was in here. It's a very well packaged. Can you guys kind of see? But this one's interesting because it has all the tips described as above. So it's got the disc, disc stylus and little point tip, but it also has a paintbrush tip. And we're going to go to the screen. I'm going to show it to you, but actually I'm going to put it on the camera so you guys can kind of see because it's kind of interesting what's going on here. Okay, so it has this little paintbrush tip and it actually, it will really paint like on the, I know, it's, it's crazy. It's not very expensive. I want to say it was under $35. But it really does have that, that tip right there. Now, um, I'm going to, just so you don't have a blank shot, I'm going to take that out so you guys can kind of see that. This one is one that's a stacking screwed system. So I want you to see that. This one has a ballpoint pin in it. You have to, I'm scared to take this apart because I'm not mechanical. And because no one's here in the studio with me and I don't know what will happen, it might not go back together. You probably will not struggle with this in the any way, shape, or form. I just, my mind does not work to put things back together. Yes, I had a fear of that. Well, down inside of this, it has the disc part as well and a ballpoint pin. But I'm too scared to take it apart because you have to invert the pieces. And to be honest with you, I don't really know a thing about it. But we're going to go to the screen and I'm going to show you guys how it works. Okay, because I think that's super, super cool. So we're going to go to the screen and let's look. All right, okay. First off, my first complaint with this one is the fact that it doesn't have at the other end, because it actually really is like a paintbrush, the other end is not anything that you could touch the, the capacitive screen with, okay? So first off the bat, you're going to have to have one of these so you can make some selections there, okay? Because you don't want to be, you don't really want to be touching, and you guys can kind of see this stylus you have to be right in front of it. So this particular one is not powered. It doesn't really make any difference like that. But it actually does work as a paintbrush, even when it's on the draw tool. Can you guys see that was on the draw tool? Now if I put it on paintbrush, it will actually paint as well. Now I don't understand how this is working, I'll be honest with you, because it's a paintbrush and it's not a tip. And even, even I can touch the all clear. And I mean, I'm barely touching you guys. The guy... I, I don't know a way to dis really describe that, but I really, really am barely touching. So it's it's kind of interesting because I'm barely touching this, and you can see it's forming the stitches just perfectly. Can you guys kind of see that? That's that's very interesting. So that's your wild card. Your wild card came from Amazon. All the stylus pins came from Amazon, everything that we showed you. This particular one was your wild card. It was called the Friendly Swede 4-in-1. And it has um, the disc stylus, I believe, and then the paintbrush and the ballpoint pen. And I don't remember what the fourth one was, but you can Google it. You get the general idea. This one's just kind of fun because I just don't see how the paintbrush tip works. Like if you look at it, it truly is a paintbrush. Like look at the little tip. It's a paintbrush. So it's so weird. It's just so weird that it absolutely does work, but it does. I'm hopeful that we didn't, first of all, I want to apologize if we did confuse you. It was crazy in here. And when they moved the camera equipment and some of those things, um, Everything that was on the table got scooted over and I had everything lined out with some post-its in order of number because they do not mark the styluses at all as far as name and brand. The ones that I have here, I think we went over about six or seven kinds, they're not marked. I just happen to know the EVAC and the Active Touch Stylus because I tend to like those ones. The EVAC is the one I use all the time. So we're going to recap. Let's have a little recap. One, two. All right. Well, okay. So first off, we know that we have some Solaris stylus options. We know that our stylus that came with our machine will eventually get new tips. I don't. I can't say we know that, but I'm very. Sus I'm suspicious they will just because the tip screws in with the little mesh cap. So I'm thinking there must be more tips coming. You possibly are you very content with that stylus? If you are, just keep on trooping along. If in fact you are using a mouse and that makes you happy, then you may do that as well. This little video was for people who maybe aren't super thrilled with their stylus options as of yet or as of late, and they kind of want to know what options are out there. So to recap, do you need an anti-fouling glove? I don't know that you absolutely have to have it, 
but it's here. Uh, let's see, the Active Touch Capacitive Stylus. This one's really cool. A little on the tall side, but some of you may really like it. I have big hands, so I can hold it. If you have teeny tiny hands, you either will like it or hate it. Right behind that, we've got the Evac Active Stylus. I love this stylus. This is the one I love. It powers up. It works every time. It's, it's not non-resistant. It's, it's just, it's great. All right, the Mecco Digital Stylus. This one... This one actually on closer inspection, even though, I, even though I've used it a few times, this one on closer inspection, I actually don't hate, and I think I'll probably be keeping this one. That was the Mecco Digital Stylus. I like that one a lot. Moku, the Moku Universal Stylus. This one for me was a little heavy on the cap, a little bit of weight on it. For me, again, that's for me. I'm having to draw right-handed, and I'm actually left-handed, so it's a whole thing for me. So you might like this one. You may like this one. Xyron stylus. That's the one that came with the anti-fouling glove, and I think that's really nice. This one does exceptionally well itself. This one, this was a really good front runner as well. Z-Speed. Um, I can't say I like it or don't like it. It's just, it's okay. It's not terrible. It's on the list because it's a portable option. It wasn't something I preferred, but you may actually like it. So it just kind of depends. Keep in mind, all the stylus that I chose do work very well on this machine. When you select one, it's just going to be a matter of personal preference or what you like, okay? All right, after that, we had the Mako High Sensitivity Stylus. So not to be mixed up with the Miko Digital Stylus. Same company, different type, okay? This one has the disc type. This other one does not. It has the fine tip, okay? So if you're not into the disc, you know, you can get rid of that right away. Then after that, we did the ESDS Active Stylus. And to be honest with you, I liked that one a lot. It was a, it was a big hit. Your little carrying case in case if you end up with more than one. And then our wild card, which was the Friendly Swede Foreign one with the paintbrush which I have to tell you, I thought was pretty impressive. I thought it was really kind of cool um, that you could use a paintbrush on the screen. I'm going to try to do some things with that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson and that it's not really a lesson, but just an overview on the stylus. I was home. I have homework. I have to learn my production software. And so I thought if I have to learn my production software and if I have to turn in an assignment, maybe I should go ahead and just make a video. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. You've had a good time. And maybe this answers a few questions about how to use these. And hopefully that you will um, get more use out of your Baby Lock Solaris and you'll have more fun designing on the screen because it really is an amazing piece of equipment. And the fact that you can draw and it can convert to stitches in a matter of seconds is simply amazing. And with the right stylus, it's that much better. I'm Nikki from Nikki's Embroidery and I really appreciate you guys joining me and I hope you guys have a great day.